Hey guys, I'm back for another video and welcome to another Hypixel Skyblock tutorial. And in this one, I'm going to be giving 25 more Skyblock tips that you didn't know. Before this video starts, look at this. 30 virus hacked bad line cloak is available now you can get it now in the link in the description or the pinned comment it literally leaks code look at how cool that is this is probably my favorite cloak release so far it is actually available forever it's not just a limited time but if you want to support me it would help a lot if you did grab this guy it is honestly really neat anyways let's get on with the video any dungeons players would know that there's a bug currently that if you get kicked from a dungeon if you are dead then when you return to the dungeon you will have a spirit pet equipped it's a pretty garbage pet and only really helps you because of half-life which is a perk you get anyways even if it's not equipped so in order to fix that you can actually set up an auto pet rule as you can see here when you enter dungeon equip whatever pet you wanted to equip so what this is going to do is it'll force the game to set your pet to the proper thing in my case blue whale instead of spirit pet when you return for my next suggestion you can actually replace a super boom tnt in dungeons with this item it's called the conjuring it basically has an ability where it shoots the guided sheep that the mages get in dungeons but any class can use this in place of a super boom now unfortunately it doesn't work outside of dungeons as i'm about to show you but the guided sheep does blow up any crypts in dungeons it really doesn't save you that many coins like 5,000 per time so like as you can see it doesn't work out of dungeons but in dungeons that would have blown up so yeah it's only like 50 to 100k so if you want to have like a cheap infinite boom tnt with a few little caveats then conjuring is a pretty decent item leveling pets can get pretty difficult especially when you get to the upper 90s in legendary pets so here's a suggestion for people like me trying to collect every level 100 pet in the game or maybe you just need to get a specific pet to level 100 for example a black cat or maybe a yeti and you just don't feel like doing the skill associated with the pet especially yeti a lot of people don't really like fishing so here's what i'm gonna do let's demonstrate it with a tarantula what you can do is go and grab an all skill xp boost from over here at zog and we can give the pet the all skill xp boost and then head to your experimentation table over on the island and you can actually level any pet in the game this way i know it would make sense to level a guardian because it gives you more enchanting xp but you'd be surprised at how much xp you get also if you're using bad line and got my cloak <laughs> you get these fancy new solvers now which make it so that the mini games are extremely easy and if you are going to be doing that, if you want the maximum super pair clicks, then I would suggest getting the Chromatron, Chronometron minigame to the point where this round, it hits round 13. You don't have to pass round 13. You just had to hit it and then you can cancel it. So with Ultra Sequencer, you have to get the minigame to the point where you see the number 10 pop up like this and then you can quit the mini game the solvers again are awesome in bad line so now once you've done that you can do super pairs i have um, metaphysical experiments unlocked because i've got enchanting 60 well you only need enchanting 50 to unlock this but anyways uh another thing that you should probably do is have an xp share active so that you can get an additional like 30 percent xp from this also, my strategy with super pairs, especially with the solver, is just to do a pattern like this. And then if I see something that matches, I'll just go for it. I just go in a very predictable pattern. I don't know if it really matters, uh, but especially with the solver, you're not going to really be missing much. So a typical run of the minigame got me just over a million enchanting XP, which translates to about 250,000 XP of any other type. I think it's divided by four if the pet's not of equal type. And that was enough to get my tarantula leveled up to 98 and like a fifth of the way to 99, just from one use of the enchantment table. So very, very good. Would recommend you do all four of the super pairs, especially if you have at least enchanting 50 with the solvers. You're gonna get any pet you want basically to level 100 within a couple days. It's insane. Now, here's a concept that helps me out a lot with my progression in Skyblock. Now, you might remember I talked about XP shares, right? If we look at my Blaze Pet here, it has an XP share equipped, and I got it all the way to level 89 without any sort of active grinding. Now, not only should you always have a pet 
with an XP share active, but if you want to be fancy about it like me, you can have three pets with XP shares and swap them out depending on what grind you're doing. For example, if I wanted to collect my clay minions and get fishing XP, I would want to have the dolphin pet equipped, or I would want to have the dolphin pet in my pet menu with the XP share and then equip my squid pet. And then I unequip the blaze because the thing is, if you have two pets equipped with XP share, then they will split the XP. And if it's not of the right type, they only get a quarter of 25% of the XP which is bad. So you only, if you're doing combat, you wanna have a combat pet out with another combat pet with an XP share. If you're doing fishing, then you would want to have a fishing pet with another uh, fishing pet not equipped with XP share, but not any other pet with XP share, if that makes sense. So I would say swap them out. I did a lot of farming off camera, forgot to switch to B, wasted a lot of XP because I had blazed out, that sort of thing. This one's a little complicated to explain, but basically the way I buy things in Skyblock is that i wait until the value of the item has dropped to the point where it's at the bottom of its depreciation curve dungeons gear is a great way to explain this for example i got my storm armor when the price of wither armor was just about equal on the auction house to buying it from the chest and dungeons and same goes for laser eyes they were about 200k at the time and those don't have a chest price but i mean they can't drop that much lower and at that point i mean if it drops 100k i didn't waste that much money basically the only time you should be buying something overpriced is if you're going to use the item to make more money storm armor was not the case for me i just wanted it and turns out that the value is not going to drop any further than it has because it, it physically can't the price of withered uh chest plates and well especially chest plates but the rest of the armor is not going to drop any further unless it gets completely outclassed by something else but considering it's floor seven we got time to make use of this gear and make it uh, make it the money worth it so there's something to do with the auction house that could save you some money so for example let's look up livid dagger if you want to buy a livid dagger from the auction house you could just get the lowest bin and then if you wanted to you can apply recom reforge stone all that but what you could also do is if you look around in the auction house you might get lucky with someone that recommed it added stars put enchantments all of that and typically you can find deals that are less than the sum of its parts in price if that makes sense now the reason for that is opportunity cost it's like if you wanted to buy for example a recombobulator from the bazaar you could then use it to recom anything you want but if it's already applied to a livid dagger it's stuck there so you could get a good deal if you wanted to buy max gear see a pre-recombobulated piece of armor or a weapon you could potentially pay less than five mil more than the value of the item does that make sense i think that makes sense it really depends on the markets though it's not like every single time you hop into the auction house you're going to find a good deal but it's something worth looking for if you wanted to for example get like three fourths necron with warden helmet you might get lucky if one of them's already recommed and the price is less than five mil more than a clean one this suggestion is a little niche it's one of those investment type things that honestly won't benefit you for probably several months it's along the lines of upgrading your bank capacity so that you get more interest to the point where it only pays itself back after like a year but this one's a little better than that and that's the krampus helmet you can buy it in place of a diamond spreading, place it in a minion, it'll generate red gifts for you. Now, the thing is that Krampus Helmet, it's not that much better than a diamond spreading. Like, I would say maybe two or three times better, but it, you can only put in one minion, and it is like five, six mil right now. So, it's going to take a little while to pay itself off, but, you know, if you're planning on you know, go in the long haul with Skyblock and playing for over a year, then it would make sense to buy a Krampus helmet and use it as an investment. Here's a little trick if you dislike the pups in Sven Pack Master Slayer. So what you can do actually is hit it with a Soul's Rebound. And then there you go. That's how you one tap a tier four. I have a withered M blade, <laughs> but uh, yeah, what the Soul's Rebound does is it basically just skips the phase of the pups if you manage to collect enough damage before the tick actually happens five seconds later then it'll just skip the whole boss and kill it which is pretty nice this is an early game suggestion but actually what you can do right at the start of the game if you want to get some easy mining xp you can head to the mine merchant buy a gold ingot and then um you know could either chop some trees or go to the lumber merchant buy some sticks make a gold pickaxe and then what you can do is head to the enchanting building and get yourself 
right here you can get two efficiency books combine the two efficiency books in an anvil apply it to your shovel and then just like that you can insta mine the sand at the uh, mushroom desert in this example i have haste three because god potion and diamond shovel but you can do this you just need a gold shovel efficiency too and you can insta mine sand and then get some mining xp really fast and it should get you to the point where you can unlock bazaar really fast so have fun with that there's a little quirk with the dwarven mines that might be interesting to some people so what you can do is head on top of this pillar right here and then i would suggest getting bat person armor and a grappling hook you'll notice there's a hole right here if you teleport up the hole a little bit you can actually use the grappling hook to just <laughs> escape the dwarven mines technically you can mine up here although the game lags really bad when you're up here it's mostly just an easter egg so i don't know if it can really help you much with progression other than you know using it to to mine by yourself also if you're wondering what these holes are it's for lighting it's so that you know you can actually see in the dwarven mines but anyway i would suggest instead if you want to break a lot of blocks fast that first of all you got to have mineral armor which is pretty nice and then if we equip whatever pickaxe we have i have a refined titanium pick like i said you can do this or what i would suggest is better actually you go to the dragon's nest and if you have a high enough mining speed then you can just break the end stone which i clearly don't so i can shift and this is a great way to get your not only mining xp but i would say in terms of mining xp it's actually better just to you know mine mithril but if you want to get compact up on your pickaxe this is by far the fastest way but make sure you have a high enough mining speed to the point where you can just run around and do this since the change that introduced the storage they made it so you can't put builders wands in ender chest pages or backpacks which could be really annoying so if you want a place to put it that's not a chest in your island i would suggest the personal vault also with basket of seeds nether wart pouch it's nice it's just a place to put it away and you'll always know where to find it if you plan on keeping a pet permanently for example you're gonna buy it and just not sell it ever then if you want to get a discount on the pet you can actually search it up on the auction house here and i don't know let's say i need a yeti pet so the cheapest yeti right now is a level 54 for 21 mil but let's say i want to get a higher level one or maybe one that has you know maybe it's legendary instead of epic You'll notice that they all have pet candies on them. Like this one is a level 76 with two pet candies. Now, keep in mind, people, I don't know if they're trying to scam, but they're trying to make the pet look better than it actually is with the candies. But I'm trying to find a good example of some massive savings here. Here's a good example of what I mean. This level one legendary baby Yeti has four out of 10 pet candy on it. It's 27 million, which is actually pretty good of a price for almost a level 100 pet. Now, because of those pet candies, it's actually worth less coins than one, for example, that's a high level that doesn't have pet candy. If we scroll up, you'll, you'll notice all of the lowest, if you search by lowest bin, all the high level pets have candies on them. And you could use that to your advantage to just get a better pet for cheaper there's a lot of pet collectors out there that'll be like oh it makes the pet worthless because it's ugly that's the reason the actual reason why pets are worth less coins with pet candy is because they're quote ugly it's so dumb mine has 10 out of 10 pet candy on it and it's level 100 with a crochet tiger plushie it's such a great pet for enderman slayer if you can't afford dragon and you know let the let them idiots just make it worth less money so you can get your discount whatever if you're shopping for pets for use in actual you know gameplay then there you go now this is a suggestion that was given to me by my guild so if it doesn't work i'm sorry you might notice that it's pretty expensive right now to get a giant sword i mean pretty sure they're like 100 mil right now turns out that a five star reaper scythe has pretty high base weapon damage i'm using an emblade right now which is um if you're planning to go for the one for all route with weapons reaper scythe isn't a terrible replacement it could be like a budget like if you don't have the coins to make emblade good but you also don't have the coins for a giant sword then reaper scythe five star is not terrible in dungeons with one for all so there you go if you're doing left click left click mage Additionally, my chat as of recording this wanted me to point out that the Juju Shortbow is a great clearing weapon. It's not a replacement for Hyperion, but it's definitely a great value. I think at the moment it's 50 mil. Let me check. Yeah, it's actually, it's a little lower than 50 mil. Very good value for what it is. In addition to that, if you want to get some budget armor, I think everybody knows about, you know, Zombie Knight Chestplate in 2-4. See this. 
this armor set. Everyone knows about this. But you can also use Zombie Knight Chestplate in place of Necron Chestplate for a budget set. It's not going to be as good, but the damage is actually quite close. So there you go. It's worth it if you're going to get 3 fourths Necron with uh, Zombie Knight. It, again, it's going to be worse, but it's still pretty good value for what it is this might surprise a lot of people but the wand of atonement with ultimate wise is actually better than an overflux power orb and it's like a tenth of the price maybe less anyways the way this item works is it just heals you for seven seconds now the thing is right i, I think i did the math 2.5 percent of 3000 hp which is about what i get when i'm using my damaging set is 75 health per second for half of your mana compared to 170 health per second, which is almost triple what the orb gives you for seven seconds for 120 mana. It's actually way better. And of course, if you want to stack them, you can. This is something I do with Enderman Slayer a lot. You put down the orb and use the wand and you'll get a ridiculous like 250 health per second, which could be very helpful if you have 3000 health, like if I were to switch to this. Another thing you might have noticed if you've been watching my videos for a while is that especially when I'm using Warden Helmet, I always have all of my farming hose in the inventory. That is on purpose. It is because you get the bonus speed from the Blessery Forge. You might look at this 13 speed, 9 speed, 9 speed, 9 speed, 20 speed, 20 speed. At the moment, these all stack. So if you are struggling to get to 100% speed with the Warden Helmet, that's a great way to do it. Or if you just want speed in general, just have a bunch of blessed farming hose in the inventory good i actually made a video about this before but now there's a spreadsheet for it so if you want to figure out which minion makes the most money you can actually get the spreadsheet i'm gonna link it in the description it's made by t-blaze warrior or something like that it will show the best minions for money so right now it says that glowstone actually is the best minion which is crazy to me i didn't think that would happen second place is tarantula which makes sense because people are trying to get uh rev flesh for wand of atonement but yeah, so if you want to figure out which minions to place just for money to sell at Bazaar, this spreadsheet is great. And like I said, Glowstone's the best at the moment. I don't even know why. I think Glowstone Collection got a new item, but whatever. Here's a suggestion for the Dwarven Mines. If you make it to 500 commissions, you unlock what's called the Royal Pigeon. And it basically lets you talk to the emissaries without having to go to them. It's like a bat phone, but better because you just right click on it. But the problem is there's a little strategy that gets you more mining XP when redeeming quests. And the Pigeon, unfortunately, makes it so you can't do it and it's right clicking with a refined stonk on the npc now i think if you're fast enough you could swap actually i have the stonk out at the moment so i could redeem a quest for extra mining xp so yeah there you go you could just swap really quickly if the lobby's laggy it might be easier but um otherwise just go to the npc but if you can swap it then i guess you can still use royal pigeon now this one's a theory i haven't tested it in the field but the new enderman slayer basically requires that you have a summoning ring with some strong mobs on it so that you can take out the shield of enderman slayer uh, so it might be a strategy right now to buy up a summoning ring that has no mobs absorbed into it for example this one is 11 mil Woo. it has no mobs in it so if you bought it and then let's say diana was active and then you gave it to um i don't know not inquisitors what's the other one warriors like those level 100 plus mobs then uh if you were to absorb those souls and resell it then you could make some money i for mine i got zombie knights from master mode floor three and those are more than enough to fight enderman so yeah if you absorb some souls and resell you might make some money i mean look at this this is the first one i'd actually go for and it's like worth like five million coins more than a, a base summoning ring so there you go our champions yeah minos champions that's what it is so the title of the video is 25 tips for progression and you might notice there's only been 19 so far so the last like five or six suggestions are all going to be enderman slayer related because that's the update that just came out so uh, let's get started so if you want to actually succeed in enderman slayer i would highly recommend a summoning ring or a reaper scythe now the thing is uh, you got to absorb some good souls into it i already described in the last suggestion zombie knights or uh minus champions are good now what i would suggest is switching to something like a storm set because the thing is these mobs require a lot of mana to spawn so i got my sheep pet and my full storm armor 
we warp into the dragon's nest and then we get to spawn them we spawn both of our mobs we can switch to our damaging set which in my case is probably going to be three fourths final destination with warden helmet that's what i would suggest on the upper end honestly i would say at least ten thousand kills on your set i have thirty thousand kills on my set so there you go we have our two bodyguards spawned, as I like to call them. We have our armor set. If you're going to go for a weapon against these, would suggest something with one for all on it. I'm using an M blade with 200 mil. Some people choose to use giant sword, which would be better than an M blade up until about 500 mil, I think. And the only way you can really do better actually is another weapon I have which is the Vorpal Katana. This is actually, I don't know why I was using M-Blade, but yeah, if you can afford it, Vorpal Katana is nice. Obviously, if you want to be in the upper end, you would use Atom Split Katana. Great weapon. In terms of pets, if you can, if you can't afford Ender Dragon Pet, which is the best one in the game for this, simply because you get 25% more damage against end mobs and you get 10% extra stats, and that adds up, trust me. Uh, that's what most of the sweats use is ender dragon pet but i can't afford it so i have a baby yeti which gives you a lot of effective health obviously and if you're spawning the enderman slayer you're going to want to have an enderman pet equipped it's by far the best pet for this especially if you have like a combat xp boost item on it it levels up so fast it's basically the wolf pet but for enderman i guess another suggestion is obviously keep yourself topped up on soul flow if you're going to be attacking anything more powerful than a tier two enderman so that you can use the right click ability on the katana like that it basically gives you ferocity against the enderman i would only really use it on the extremists the mini bosses and the boss itself anything else you should be able to one tap if you have good enough gear i have an auto pet rule that equips my yeti i'm fighting a tier three for this example now there is another suggestion that i can't quite demonstrate because i'm mid fight right now but what you can do well what you should do as the fight starts you need to put an orb down and then use the wand of atonement now one thing you could do a little trick that i like to use is that if he throws one of the glyphs you can actually save yourself with the weather cloak sword but i don't currently have it in my hot bar so i can't really demonstrate that but yeah you just keep right clicking with the ability of the weapon Keep smacking them. If your health gets low, use the Wand of Atonement. And then if the fight lasts more than a minute, obviously you got to refresh your orb. Or if you have a Plasma Flux, I think it stays down for... Does it stay down longer? I don't know. Does give you more regen though. And there you go. Easy kill on a tier three. Uh, tier fours, it's pretty much the same process, but you just need better gear. If you're good enough at damage, you don't have to worry about the floating heads to look at, honestly. Unless you're doing tier fours, in which case most likely you're going to have to do that. But yeah, so... The only way you can really get better than what I have is to have an Atom Split Katana, a Ender Dragon Pet, and if your healing's not good enough with just the Overflux and the Wand of Atonement, then you can also use a Necron Blade with Wither Impact and right-click the floor as like some replacement for a zombie sword oh yeah zombie sword um if you do the strat right you shouldn't need a zombie sword but it is a good crutch if you do mess up yeah it's good to have the zombie sword in case you get really low and you start to panic now again before the video ends it would really help me out a lot if you could get the 30 virus hacked bad lion cloak it looks ridiculous it's pretty freaking neat and uh you'll be able to keep it forever it's it's just cool. I think I'm going to be running this cloak for probably the rest of my duration playing Minecraft. The only thing that's going to get me not to be using this on a video is most likely uh, Hytale. <laughs> like, I'm literally going to be using this thing forever. It is a great cloak. Would highly recommend. And it's the best way to support me because 80% commission. Anyways, I guess that's it for the video. Hope you enjoyed the 25 tips for progression in Hypixel Skyblock. And if you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like. But otherwise, I guess that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys later.